Stan Jabalisco back again with part two of our tank circuit tutorial. And in part one I talked about how the susceptances cancel out at a particular frequency F when you connect a coil and a capacitor in parallel thereby getting what in effect amounts to an infinite opposition to alternating current between the two terminals at the extremes of the circuit. Well, that's all real nice. That's all wonderful theory. It all works out very nicely mathematically too. If you want to determine the frequency at which you will get resonance, the frequency in Hertz. You divide 1 by 2 pi times the square root of the inductance times the capacitance. That is your formula right there. You can write that down. You, I don't know if you want to memorize it or not. If you're studying for a license exam, you probably should. This inductance would be in Henry's, and the capacitance would be in Farad's if you want to calculate the frequency in Hertz. But fortunately, well, you know, in the, you're rarely going to be calculating frequencies in Hertz, first of all, and you're rarely going to use units of Henry's or Farad's. So what, what good does this formula do you? Well, as it turns out, you're in luck if you're into radio frequency applications in particular. You are in luck because this formula also works for inductances in micro Henry's and capacitances in micro farads. When you do that, you get the frequency in megahertz. Now, I'm not going to take you through a bunch of mundane calculations. I'm not going to plug numbers in here and drag you through a bunch of multiplication and division and the taking of square roots. I will note that you might want to, to remember that 2 pi is roughly equal to 6.2832, pi being equal to 3.1416 approximately. So you might want to remember that as a fundamental constant. You'll re want to remember that you multiply the inductance and the capacitance and then take the square root. Then you multiply by 6.2832 and finally you take the reciprocal of that whole thing. That's how you get the frequency. Okay, that's cool. But suppose that instead Let's get rid of all of this extraneous notation here. To the best extent that I can, I'll get rid of it. Let's suppose now for a moment that you know the frequency and you know the capacitance, but you want to figure out what the inductance is that you need. Well, now that involves just a little bit of algebra. First of all, you might want to note Let's just take you through that step by step. Let's invert both sides first so that you get 1 over f equals 2 pi times the square root of LC. Now I told you that we know the capacitance, so what we're looking to find is the inductance that we need. Okay, this formula also holds. Now a little more algebra. Let's divide through by 2 pi. Then we get 1 over 2 pi f equals the square root of LC. Well, that's great. Let's square both sides. 
Now we've got this. And finally, we want to determine L. So we divide through by C, and we get L equals one over two pi F, the quantity squared times C. And as things work out, because you're just multiplying L by C, you can also transpose these. And get the same result. That's, that's a little tough to read, isn't it? Let me uh, just... So, that's all you really got to do. You know the frequency, you know the inductance, you want to figure out the capacitance that you're going to need. Vice versa. You know the frequency, you know the capacitance, you want to figure out the inductance you're going to need. Remember, microhenries for the inductance, microfarads for the capacitance, and megahertz for the frequency. So, here's a practice problem for you. Suppose that you have a capacitor that will tune from 0 to 365 picofarads. 200 picofarads is about the middle of the range. You want to know what the inductance is that you're going to need in order to get a frequency of 1.8 megahertz. Got that? You have a 200 picofarad capacitor. You have a frequency of 1.8 megahertz. 200 picofarads being the middle of the range of a variable capacitor that goes from about 20 to 365 picofarads. So you want to make an antenna tuner. You need to know the inductance that you're going to need to get resonance at 1.8 megahertz. Have at it. Here's a caution. This is not in microfarads. This quantity here is given in picofarads. And remember that one picofarad equals 10 to the minus sixth micro farads. I'm not going to I'm not going to solve this for you. I'm going to make you do it for yourself. But I'm not even going to tell you what the answer is. I'm going to make you figure that out for yourself. Calculate it 3 or 4 times to make sure you're right. See what you need for an inductance and then build that antenna tuner, get on 160 meters and have yourself a ball. If you're a ham radio operator, now in part three, I'm going to show you a couple of applications for tank circuits in antenna tuners.